Hi, Jamie Davis, the pod medic here at the Physio Control Podcast Studio at EMS World Expo 2012. I'm here with Cam Pollock, the Vice President of Marketing for Physio Control. And Cam, you know, I don't feel like a conference is complete until I get to talk with you because it gives me a pulse check of the industry. How have things been going on with Physio Control? Things are going really well. Uh, I think we talked last time. We had just been uh, recognized our Independence Day. We were just bought by uh, Bain Capital, who's been in the news quite a bit, as uh, you can imagine, with the elections going on. In fact, we're really looking forward to uh, the election being over so that they're a little bit out of the news. But uh, it's going really well. It's been nine months now. Uh, we've added about 10% to our workforce since uh, we joined Bain. And uh, we, actually, we actually have more product development efforts going on right now at our company than any time in the last probably 20 years. So, uh, so far, so good with that partnership. That's, that's uh, amazing, and I, I just keep waiting for the new products to come out, and I know you've got things you can't tell me about. Um, what, what's the focus that you guys are taking with this conference here at EMS World Expo? Yeah, our, our big focus overall as a company right now is around uh, improving systems of care. And uh, by that I mean systems uh, throughout an entire organization that are going to improve outcomes. Um, you know, we, we had a, a historical focus on defibrillation as a company going back to 1955, and uh, we really recognize the importance of looking at all the aspects of the chain of survival, and not just the chain of survival, but uh, everything that an emergency provider does. So we really see ourselves as an emergency medical response company. Uh, but the system of care is what we focus on, and, and that's really focusing on patient outcomes. Uh, we have a big emphasis at this show on CPR improvement, and uh, everyone knows uh, the guidelines. The guidelines have changed in, in the last few years to really put an emphasis on high-quality CPR. Uh, and that's uh, all facets of CPR, making sure that you've got um, you know, great um, compression ratios, um, you know, great depth and rate of compressions. And uh, there's a lot of ways to accomplish that, and we see it as a continuum. So everything from uh, making sure that uh, people are using the state-of-the-art product Life Back 15, right, with, uh, with a metronome uh, to really help people stay on rate. Um, we're really bullish on our uh, CPR analytics, which comes with CoachStat 9. Uh, we've seen great improvement from some of our customers who have, who have looked at um, their CPR performance retrospectively mm -hmm. and being able to feed that information back in a timely fashion to the crews uh, really does make a difference, especially in CPR compression ratio, where people are looking at that and saying, why are these large gaps there? Why is CPR not being performed in these certain areas? And it doesn't take a lot of good feedback that's timely to really get noticeable improvement. And uh, that's probably the single biggest area that we believe could make a difference to really close those gaps and make sure CPR, high quality CPR is being done the entire uh, resuscitation. Uh, and so, and then of course at the other end of the spectrum we have Lucas 2, which we've talked about several times. And uh, Lucas 2 of course gives perfect rate of compression and depth for as long as you need it. And it's, it's much safer for crews. I mean, nobody wants to have crews in the back of an ambulance uh, doing CPR, it's not safe. Um, but it also gives you a chance to close the gaps um, when you're moving a patient downstairs, mm -hmm. CPR is still going on, and, and the best CPR you can give um, uh, for as long as you need it. Uh, now for the future, we um, have introduced, we started talking about a technology um, that we've been in development with called triaxial field induction. And there's been a, a paper on that that we've come out with. Uh, it was uh, highlighted a bit in the, the GEM State of the Science mm -hmm. supplement. We talked about that technology, and for us, uh, and I've told you this before, we're really a science-driven company. And when we were looking at ways to help improve CPR, we didn't just want to you know, pick whatever was out there. We've had concerns about accelerometer-based technologies for a long time because um, it's been shown that they're not accurate, especially on soft surfaces. So we wanted something that could be uh, useful and accurate on any surface. And so this is what triaxial field induction does. Um, it's a technology that's accurate anywhere. And uh, we'll be coming fairly soon. Uh, with a product that utilizes that. Um, I expect we'll see uh, CE mark approval um, and be able to sell it in Europe here uh, within the next month or two. We, st we showed it at uh, ERC okay. and uh, probably by the next time you and I are talking at, at one of these shows uh, we'll be able to talk a lot more about it. But we're excited about it. We think it'll make a, a big difference. Kim, you talked about being a company that's driven by science. Uh, one of the other things I think my listeners are interested in is uh, so a lot of the defibrillator manufacturers seem to have been acquired recently by uh, eight foreign companies of various sorts. Uh, interestingly enough, that leaves you the only American defibrillator company. W what's going on? Is there a trend there? Yeah, uh, interesting you should say that, Jamie. We, uh, uh, one of our, our last remaining American competitors is being acquired by a Japanese company. And if you look back uh, just three years ago, uh, there were five companies making 
uh, U.S. owned companies making defibrillators here in the U.S. and we are the, the last uh, one standing at the moment. Um, we, we make all our defibrillators in, in the United States. We're fully U.S. owned now um, and have been for the last 57 years. Uh, I'm not sure what the trend, what's driving the trend. Uh, several of the acquisitions we've seen have been out of Japanese companies. Uh, the yen is very strong. The companies that I see are, uh, are all out of Asia and they seem to be trying to get a foothold in the United States and are looking for an American company that they can really kind of uh, grab that foothold with. Um, I don't see that happening to us anytime soon. Um, I mean, we're pretty happy with our new owners, but uh, yeah, it's an interesting trend, and, and we've seen it outside even of the defibrillator industry as well. Um, a local company of our uh, in our neighborhood, Sonosite Ultrasound Company, that a lot of people will be familiar with, they were purchased of, as well by a Japanese company in the last year. So we're, we're continuing to watch the trend and see what it means for us. You know, I want to take a moment here as we close out to just thank you and Physio Control for your sponsorship of the Code STEMI project and, and that web series. Uh, they're going to London, thanks to you, to take a look at the London Ambulance Service and expanding the scope into resuscitation care. And it ha that really kind of melds very well with your approach to improving systems and showing people what can be done. Yeah, well, London is, is one of the best EMS systems in the world. Uh, we've been working with them for a long time. Uh, they are, uh, made a, a very large uh, decision recently to, to standardize on physio control ac across our entire fleet. So they use uh, Lifeback 15s now. They've converted almost everything over from 12s. And uh, they're, on the BLS side, they're going to Lifeback 1000s. Mm -hmm. They're still making that conversion, but uh, they use a different product uh, before. Uh, they're a very high-quality system and one of the largest cities in the world. Uh, we were very interested in how they operate. They just uh, had a major event, of course, preparing for the Olympics. Uh, came through that, so we actually wanted to get something going with them earlier, but they were a little busy um, with what was going on in London. But uh, we're excited about it. We, and it, we think it broadens the Code STEMI uh, view, uh, getting beyond just chest pain and, and uh, taking care of STEMI patients to the entire system. And resuscitation is a key part of that. And so we're going to be looking at how uh, London gets the kind of resuscitation improvements that we've been seeing from them. They're, they've been a great partner, and we're really excited to see what we can get when we go and talk to them about their system. Well, and on behalf of all of the EMS community, thank you for helping to continue to bring those kinds of innovative uh, views and looks at different things around the world. We really appreciate it. Cam, thanks. It's always great to chat with you here, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at a next event. All right. Thanks a lot, Jamie. And I'm Jamie Davis, the pod medic here at EMS World Expo Day 2. We're right here at the Physio Control Podcast Studio. And we want to make sure you check out MedicCast.tv for all of our updates from the studio and the updates that we'll be posting from the, the show for the next month or so. We'll all be posted there so you can find that.